When you came into the hall today, I trust that you picked up a copy of the bulletin part two, as well as part one. If you did, I would invite you to turn to page six. Dr. Bell, just yes. wait just a second. Uh, brethren, those who, of you who are leaving the assembly, if you would do so as quietly as possible, a lot of people are having difficulty hearing, and we have no way to tell really if everyone can hear or not. If you would just leave as quietly as possible, if you need to move about, we certainly understand that, and so we, everyone will be able to hear. All right, and you might give uh, Dr. Bell a little more volume on his mic would be helpful as well. Excuse me. All right. I'll stand closer. If you have part two of the bulletin for today, I would invite you to turn to page six. And on pages six through ten, you will find the report of the Committee on Nominations for this year. This is the result of an entire year's work on the part of a committee of 68 members representing 34 state conventions. By each nominee, you will see a letter. And on page 10 of the bulletin, you will find the definition of those letters, whether this is a new trustee, whether this is uh, someone uh, who had to be replaced because he moved or resigned or whatnot, those letters are explained at the end of the section on page 10. Briefly, our rationale for nominees was that the potential nominee be a Bible-believing, cooperating Southern Baptist. We also tried as best we could to encourage the committee members to nominate people who had not previously served on SBC boards, and to a large degree that is the case this year. We also made a special point this year of the issue of competence. We felt very strongly that those who were going on our boards not only should be people of God, people of the book, but also people who were competent to add substantively to the work of the board and the institution or the agency. You will find here nominations for 21 entities of the Southern Baptist Convention. And Mr. Chairman, I move the adoption of this report from the Committee on Nominations and thus the election of the persons listed in the report to the offices and for the terms so indicated. All right. Thank you. Under the rules, the report of the Committee on Nominations may be amended by striking the name of a committee nominee and inserting the name of a nominee offered from the floor. Any such amendments must be considered and voted upon one at a time. The question before us is on the adopting of the report of the Committee on Nominations as printed in the Convention Bulletin. Is there any discussion? All right, microphone number two has a motion. If you will state your name and your church and your state and please make your motion. Mr. President, my name is Wade Burleson, pastor and messenger of Emanuel Baptist Church in Enid, Oklahoma. I am a member of the nominating committee. I move that Alton Fannin, pastor of First Baptist Church, Ardmore, Oklahoma, be substituted for Charles H. Armstrong, Jr. of Dallas, Texas, as a local member of the annuity board, term expiring 1997. And I would like to speak to the motion, please. All right. Uh, this is the... Is there a second to the amendment? Second. What page, please, sir, would help us? Page 7 of his SBC bulletin. All right. Page 7, the SBC bulletin. You can speak uh, to your motion. And let me say a word right now to you, Brother Wade, as we 
uh, proceed through this. We as a convention have some very narrow guidelines, as I'm sure you know, as to what we can do and what we cannot do. You can speak affirmatively about your nominee in any way that you desire, but we are not allowed to speak in any negative way about any other nominee that has been presented. And after you speak and have your time, I will turn to Brother Bill and, and the committee will speak about their nominee. So, so I want you to know and, and everybody to know that that is how we proceed because that's how we do it according to the procedures that we have adopted for our Southern Baptist Convention. Brother Wade, I, I recognize you now to speak to your nominee. Thank you, sir. I want to say that I appreciate your leadership and Dr. Bell's leadership. It was a joy for me to serve on the nominating committee. I served with Jerry Fine, a godly man from Oklahoma City, a layman. He and I, last January, at the nominating committee meeting, nominated Alton Fannin, the nominee I present to you today. The full nominating committee of 68 members discussed his nomination and approved it. His name was sent to all of the state papers, and our state paper published his name as the man who would be presented as the local member for the annuity board. This past Saturday, a subcommittee of seven, appointed by Dr. Bell, removed his name for this reason. They said a local member of the annuity board must reside within 100 miles of Dallas, Texas. This issue came up when Alton was first nominated last January. I told the full committee that Ardmore was within 100 miles. I received a call three weeks ago from two people uh, who said to me that his nomination was going to be opposed because Ardmore was 105 miles from Dallas. I have since written the Department of Transportation in Texas, the Department of Transportation in Oklahoma, the city manager of Ardmore, and I have been told and sent letters to the subcommittee that Ardmore is exactly 93 miles from the city of Dallas. This to me is a matter of principle. It has nothing to do with people. And finally, I would say, we who are from Oklahoma do not like to lose to Texas. <laughs> the annuity board has eight local members. All eight are from Texas. This would be the only member from Oklahoma. We lost Barry Switzer to the Dallas Cowboys. We lost Billy Tubbs to Texas Christian. Please, do not let us lose Alton Fannin to Texas. Brother Wade, I'm trying to be stoic as a presiding officer, and uh, you didn't help me very much. <laughs> this is a family uh, matter, I think. Uh, Dr. Bell, uh, is there someone from the committee who would like to speak for your yes, nominee? Yes, let me just say a word before I uh, introduce him. Uh, Wade is correct. This is not a personal matter, and it really isn't a state matter either. Uh, after our meeting in March, uh, there was a challenge from some people who saw the name published and who did not believe that Ardmore was within the mileage limits. And so uh, Brother Kenneth Barnett from Colorado, who is a member of our committee and subcommittee, uh, checked it out rather thoroughly. And uh, we as a subcommittee decided that uh, it was indeed, at least according to the intent of the regulation, outside the 100-mile limit. I'd like for Kenneth to come and present just briefly what we found. In 1969, the Executive Committee of the Southern Baptist Convention asked each agency of the convention to interpret vicinity of in its charter language. 
The annuity board established a hundred mile radius as its interpretation. This interpretation has guided the convention's committee of nominations since that time. We have no right to add one mile to that radius. Now, radius starts from a center point, and that center point is the annuity board in Dallas, Texas. And I, too, have talked to the highway department of the state of Oklahoma. I, too, have talked to the highway department of the state of Texas. I, too, have talked to Mobile Auto Club and AAA. And we have no authority to go beyond the 100-mile limit. But just to make sure all of those people, I've, the way I add up radius is from the center point because the radius doesn't start on the side. It doesn't start from the city limits. It starts from the annuity board. And then it goes 100 miles. We can't add to it. We can't subtract from it. As a committee, we just have to work with it and try to live with it. And if there's a complaint that comes up, the best way I knew to do is take a car and put that car on this right in front of the annuity board. <laughs> and just drive that car to the front steps of the First Baptist Church of Ardmore. Now that's 107 miles. <laughs> Any way you want to stack it or count it. Now, I want you to know I was raised in Oklahoma. <laughs> I love Oklahoma, and they're going to bury me in Oklahoma. <laughs> Dear brother, you got time. All right. What we're going to vote on uh, is simply this. We're going to seek to replace, uh, we're simply to replace the committee's nominee, who is Charles Armstrong, with uh, Alan Fanning. And that is what we're voting on. So it, we, this is an amendment, and we're voting on the amendment. So, I want to be clear about that. We're voting on the amendment, and the amendment is to replace Charles Armstrong, the committee's nominee, with uh, Alan Fanning. So, is everybody clear upon what we're voting? Okay, I believe we're ready to vote. All who are in favor of this amendment, would you let it be known by raising your ballot? <laughs> Just leave it up for a moment. We have in other halls here to get an accurate count. Thank you. Lower your ballot. All who are against this amendment, would you let it be known by raising your ballot? Hold it up just for a moment. Wait for the other halls. Right. We've got to check the other halls, if you'll just hold for a minute. Let's lower our ballots in here. I think maybe they are getting a count. They say the affirmative has it, the amendment's adopted. All right. The affirmative has it, and the amendment is adopted. <laughs> 